Sebastian has been going through a tough time these days. It all started as a misunderstanding, but Bella insists that he's cheating on her. She even found various pieces of evidence to support her claims. The first piece of evidence Sebastian's phone suddenly became dual SIM. Bella said, when did you switch to dual cards? Don't you know the second one is for a third party? If there's nothing going on, why keep the second card? Sebastian exclaimed in injustice, that second card is for the boss and important clients. They are VIPs who need 24-7 attention. However, Bella had a second point, perfume. It was a bottle of mid-range French cologne. Bella said, Sebastian, I've known you for so long. When did you ever wear this stuff? Sebastian, nonchalant, replied, our boss recommended it. We should wear it when meeting foreign clients, it's a gesture of courtesy. Bella then presented the third piece of evidence, an invoice from a certain jewelry store. Holding it up, she said, you bought such expensive gold jewelry. Who did you give it to? I never received anything. Sebastian looked surprised, oh, it was here all along. It was a gift for a client, couldn't find the receipt, so I couldn't expense it. Looking at Sebastian's seemingly genuine expression, Bella hesitated. She didn't know if the man she had been married to for seven years was sincere or just a good actor. She said, Sebastian, I'll give you one more chance to tell the truth. I confronted you today not for no reason. I won't question you over trivial matters. Sebastian firmly insisted, no, there's nothing. Really nothing. Bella bit her lip and pulled out a photo from her phone. The street lamp cast an ambiguous glow, the night was dim, and Sebastian was embracing a young girl in front of a hotel. Sebastian, holding the photo, stammered, where did you get this photo? Now is not the time for you to ask questions, Bella said coldly. Now, I need you to be honest with me. That's Skylar, a new colleague I brought along. I was drunk that day, don't really remember what happened. I hope I didn't do anything to hurt you. Drunk, don't really remember, hope I didn't do anything, hearing these words, Bella's heart turned ice cold. Because not long ago, she heard a joke involving those exact phrases, and all her anger and frustration turned into tears, streaming down her face. She gritted her teeth and said, Sebastian, you jerk. I checked your credit card statement, you booked a hotel room that day. The next day, Bella called Aria to meet up. Aria was Bella's fitness trainer, and she was the one who took the photo. Originally, Aria was out at the hotel club with friends and unexpectedly bumped into Sebastian in the middle of the night. Aria, 32 years old and perpetually single, had considerable authority when it came to men cheating. Although she hadn't tasted pork, she had witnessed too many instances of a cheating pig. She was well versed in the gossip of the ladies at the fitness center. Third party card, loves beauty, and secretly buying gifts were the three major signs of a man cheating that she had identified. Drunk, don't remember, and didn't do anything were the three excuses men often use to evade responsibility, according to her observations. When Bella met Aria at the coffee shop, she exclaimed, you nailed it, everything you said was spot on. Aria, already knowing the situation, confidently said, I told you so. Did he admit it? No. See, they're all the same. Once a duck, always deceitful. You have to push him, he won't confess unless you force him to. Hearing this, Bella felt a surge of determination. She was determined to make Sebastian tell the truth. However, Sebastian felt particularly wronged. In reality, there was nothing between him and Skylar. Skylar, a recent college graduate, was a top student and diligent worker since joining the company. Sebastian did like her, but it was an appreciation for her talent. Rarely encountering a post-90s girl so humble and hardworking, he dedicatedly mentored her. As for the night the incriminating photo was taken, he celebrated with clients until midnight, closing a significant deal, and got a bit carried away. During lunch break, Sebastian specifically sought out Skylar to inquire about what happened that night. Skylar chuckled, saying, you were like a crazy person that night, shouting and stumbling as soon as we left the hotel. I took you back, got a room for you to sleep, and then I left. Don't you remember? I only remember waking up in the hotel, Sebastian mumbled, confused. Did you use my credit card to pay for the room? Skylar jokingly replied, Sebastian, I earn only 3,000 yuan a month. Are you planning to make me pay the hotel bill? Sebastian awkwardly laughed and felt relieved. It seemed like he hadn't done anything regrettable while under the influence of alcohol. However, matters in his marriage were not as easily resolved with self-assurance. Returning home in the evening, Sebastian, on his way, bought Bella's favorite spicy beef. 
However, as soon as he entered, he heard a loud crash. Bella had thrown a glass on the floor, saying, Do you think everything's fine now? I'm telling you, if you don't explain yourself, we're not done. Having just confirmed the truth and asserting his innocence, Sebastian no longer wanted to endure any more frustration. He stood there, momentarily stunned, and then suddenly became angry. He threw the beef he bought onto the ground, exclaiming, Do you not want this anymore? Bella's mind suddenly recalled Arya's wise words, When a man has no reasoning, he will resort to ruthless tactics. That night, Bella went back to her parents' home. Why should she scold herself when dealing with a man who had cheated? She might not have a husband, but she still had a son. Bella's son was six years old. In order to qualify for enrollment in a prestigious primary school, his household registration was under Bella's parents' address. Her father was in good health, capable of taking care of his grandson without any issues. Bella thought to herself that it was fortunate her son was at her father's house. If he were at home during all this turmoil, it would undoubtedly have a significant impact on the child. Seeing Bella return unexpectedly, her father asked with concern, Why did you come back alone? Bella casually replied, I missed my son. She didn't want to talk about her emotional troubles with her father. He was naturally a bit overbearing, and she always felt that her mother passed away prematurely because of his constant nagging. Her son, however, was thrilled to see Bella and insisted on sleeping with her. They lay on his small bed, heads touching, side by side. The soft glow of a night light filled the room. Her son asked, why didn't dad come? He has to work. On weekends, will he come? Maybe. Then let's go to the museum together. Her son's words gradually turned into a gentle snore. Bella hugged him, unable to suppress a wave of heartwarming feelings. Thinking about Sebastian's arrogant face, she feared that in the future, it would be challenging for this family to stay together. Sebastian, filled with grievances, didn't go home and stayed at a friend's place for three days. His heart was burning with anger, and nothing seemed to go smoothly. One evening, he had a dinner appointment with a client. However, they had already started ordering when Sebastian received a call apologizing for cancelling. As a result, the carefully arranged elegant private room was left with only him and his assistant, Skylar. Sebastian hung up the phone, put away his forced smile, and remained silent for a moment before saying, Bring the dishes, I'll treat you tonight. Skylar was a clever girl, observant and insightful. In these past few days, she had probably figured out what had happened. Pouring a glass of wine for Sebastian, she said, Sebastian, did I cause you trouble? Skylar spoke so directly that Sebastian saw no need to hide anymore. He downed the drink, slammed the glass on the table, and vented his frustration, Women, you're so hard to understand. We've been married for so many years, why is there no trust at all? Skylar responded, Let me be straightforward, don't get angry. Why are we treating this client so lavishly today? Their contract isn't even finalized yet. Can't I worry? Isn't that obvious? Women are the same. When they don't have a strong hand, they start to worry. In fact, her suspicion about your loyalty is also a doubt about her own charm. What do you think? Sebastian hadn't expected to be enlightened by a young girl. Upon reflection, Bella was also a woman in her thirties. Standing on the tip of the tail of youth, the word trust wasn't just a question for the partner, but also a sincere concern for oneself. Sebastian turned to Skylar and said, All right, you wait here for me. Return kindness with kindness. Did you major in the Jean Young series in college? Skylar obediently gave a salute and said, I dare not, I dare not. I appreciate your generosity. Three days passed, and Bella couldn't stand it any longer. Her father's sensitivity to her emotions remained as high as it was during her school days. The time her son spent doing homework became an interrogation session for him. What's wrong? Did you have a fight? Do you want me to mediate? If it weren't for her own dad, Bella felt like shouting, get lost. She felt sorry for herself, there was nowhere peaceful to go. On Sunday, she decided to go back. While changing shoes in the hallway, her father muttered, let me tell you, your mom had a saying back in the day, your mouth belongs to others, but your husband is your own. Whether a man is good or not, only you would know. That Sebastian, I think he's not bad. If there's any issue, let dad talk to you guys about it. Bella rolled her eyes towards the sky, opened the door, and left. Returning home, the house was still in disarray. Broken glass, sharp edges glistening, beef scattered on the floor emitting a peculiar smell. They say sweating can uplift the mood. She grabbed her workout clothes and decided to go to the fitness center for a workout. 
Arya was on duty that day, having just finished leading a group of health-seeking middle-aged women in aerobics, sitting on the floor chatting gossip. Arya said, Do you know Miss Bella from apartment 26? She's been having a fierce quarrel with her husband these days. They might be heading for a divorce. Let me tell you, all the signs of infidelity I mentioned are spot on. If you don't believe it. At that moment, Bella was on her way to the changing room. After listening for a while to the various comments, she quietly left. Suddenly, she realized that while she had been enthusiastically uncovering the truth, she had never considered what kind of outcome she really wanted. Did she want to leave? She hadn't thought about it. Back at home, she threw her workout clothes on the sofa, put on an apron, and started cleaning. It seemed that her mother's words held some life wisdom. Gossip belonged to others, but life was her own. Why should she make her own home a mess just to enrich the neighbor's gossip? In reality, marriage was a gamble, and believing in oneself was the only chance to win. If a man was destined to be a scoundrel, she wanted to live a comfortable life before he turned into one. After so many years together, Bella had a rough idea of what kind of person Sebastian was. They really needed to have a good conversation as a couple. At 8 o'clock, Sebastian called to explain the misunderstanding with Skylar and asked, Wife, are you still angry? Can I come home or should I bring Skylar back to explain in person? Looking at the newly tidy room, Bella said, Enough with the nonsense. Come back and bring some beef with you.